Hi, this is Kathleen, and welcome to the first narrated slideshow for the chapters. Um, for Really what these are is they're just narrated versions of some slides that have some broad information about the chapter, just to kind of reiterate some of the main points that are in there. Um, not all of the information on these slides will be in the quizzes. You'll still need to read the textbook and look through that. And there's some really great photos in the textbook as well that I don't have on these slides. So this is just to supplement um, and hopefully clarify a couple of things. So the main question we're asking here is what is theater? A lot of you probably already know what this is or you may have heard this word tossed around a lot but we use it in a lot of different ways. So when we talk about the origins of theater they're very very ancient. We can trace theater back to the beginnings of humanity. Um, the word is from the ancient Greek however um, which we know about up to about 2500 years ago and that word theatron meant seeing place. It's where they went to hear and tell stories. Today the word can mean many different things. We talk about it being a place that you go to to per see performances. We can also talk about it as being a group of people. Um, a company of players is known as a theater or theater group. And it's also an occupation. You can say, I work in theater. Fundamentally, theater is an art form that uses live performance. That's the basic definition. So let's talk about it as a place. It's a structure. It varies in size. It varies in decoration. It varies in functionality. You can do um, theater in a warehouse. You can do theater in a grand concert hall. So it doesn't really matter. There's only one requirement, an empty space. You may have seen theater done in the streets. It can be done in a park. It can be done in a garage. I've seen theater done in elevators, in um, city halls. You know, it could be anywhere. So this provides a place to act and a place to watch. If you have actors and you have an audience, you have theater. It can also be a company. It's a very, very collaborative art. You have lots of different kinds of artists doing different kinds of things. And they're all animated by a shared vision. So on a broader scale, you can also talk about theater referring to a category, like you can categorize it and say the Elizabethan theater, which would be Shakespeare's time. You can say the American theater, it's the way in which we describe things that happen in America. You can say theater of the 1940s. So in the same way we talk about film and television, we can talk about theater. Theater is also definitely an occupation. It's a business. If, you're, if your parents are questioning why you're taking a theater class or what the importance is, you can always say, hey, it's a business. Um, it's work. We have labor. It depends on physical exertion. You have to build scenery, you have to build things, you have to walk around, you have to use tools. Many people work in multiple roles. Lots of electricity going on in theater. Um, it's distinct from a play. When you talk about a play, you're talking about the script. Uh, or, I mean, you're talking about, you know, freedom and just being improvised. Um, certainly there is a place for that in the theater, but Unlike play, this is very calculated, very structured. We have at least a beginning, and a middle, and an end when you define theater. Even in improvising, you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Whereas in play, you don't really know how it's going to end or when, or when sometimes. Um, theater is also an art, for sure. And we'll talk a lot more about that. So here it is as an art. The, theater, the art of theater involves impersonation. You're taking an actor and you're creating a character. In ancient times, we go back to the ancient Greeks or even beyond that, they used masks. They would put on a mask and then we would know who they were. Um, because the theaters were so large back then, people couldn't see very well <laughs> if they were sitting in the top row and so masks were very important. Um, it makes it unique because you're taking a character and you're putting a live person to it. The art of theater involves a paradox. A paradox is like a challenge or something really difficult. And something that's really difficult in theater is that you have an actor pretending to be somebody else. And this has gone through various stages and there's various philosophies about this. But the actor must disappear behind the character, yet the actor is applauded and celebrated. So the art is transforming oneself into somebody else, but at the same time the actor has to maintain their own integrity as a human being. So we call it the paradox because the actor has to be themselves and they have to be truthful, but they have to lie about who they are at the same time. So that's a very difficult challenge for actors. So when we talk about theater as performance, theater um, is something we really do every day. We perform every day. We are in classrooms, we're in public spaces, we're in sports. We don't always say what we want to say. So we are definitely structuring the way that we present ourselves the same way that actors do. Theater, however, is a much formal 
planned way of doing that. So we, we talk about two different types of performance, presentational and representational. Pretty much anything in theater can be broken down into these two categories. In presentational theater, you are acknowledging the audience, like stand-up comedy. You're talking directly to them. You might even go out into the audience, bring people up on stage, something like that. It's a direct presentation of the story. However, in representational, you do not acknowledge the audience. It's a little bit more common. This might be more what you think of. Because you go and they're telling the story, but it's like the audience isn't even there. We call that the fourth wall sometimes. There's three walls of the theater, the side, the back, and the other side. But then you have this wall that's removed, and we are just peering in through the audience stage and watching them, but they don't, the characters don't acknowledge the audience. So that's what we mean by representational. Okay, one more slide. Theater is live. This is a very, very important distinction between film and television, of course. Um, the liveness gives three fundamental forces. There's a rapport between the audience and the actor. There's an energy that is shared. And you know what I mean if you've been in a play or if you've even been in the audience and you are actually, as an audience member, you are exerting energy toward the stage and that energy is transformed into the performance by the actors. Sometimes actors have to wait for laughter. Sometimes they have to wait for applause. That wouldn't happen in film or television. Um, it's immediate. Anything can happen, and things certainly do. It's happening right now in front of you. An actor might be crying, and they're crying right there in this very moment. They might be yelling right there in this very moment. Something might go wrong. Um, you know, a costume piece falls off, or somebody forgets their line, or something like that. And so you never know. And so there's, so there's kind of an edge to it that you don't necessarily have in film and television, because in film and television, you know that it's done. You know that it's perfect. Um, you know the actors have planned all of this and they're, they're not even doing it right in front of you. And so there's, there's a different kind of energy, certainly, in live theater. And that's really, really important. You cannot have theater without a live audience. It does not exist. So those are some really basic overviews. Have fun on the quiz. Let me know if you have any questions.